Hey, how's it going? My name is Xu. So I talk about different apps every week, but today I want to share with you my favorite apps on my iPhone. Okay, so the first one is Simple Login. It's a free app that I now use almost every time when I have to use my email to sign up for something. The idea is really simple. Instead of giving out my real email address, I can create unique email aliases for different services. So when signing up for a new newsletter or online store, I can generate a new email address in second through this app and all emails still land in my inbox. And this way, even if one of these services gets compromised, my main email address remains secure. Also, if you start to receive spam from one of these email addresses, you can simply disable them to shut them down. Okay, speaking of security, the second one is 1Password, which is very well known, but it's definitely one of the most useful apps on my iPhone. So naturally, I'm using it to store all my passwords, um, credit cards, and even my IDs, like my driving license and passport. For such an affordable price, it makes managing passwords so much easy and secure. So rather than using the same password for everything, you can have one password generate strong passwords for different services and save them in one location instead of your note tab, which might not be so safe. Okay, the third one is Documents. And this one is a must have for any new iPhone. If you're using the default files app, Documents is a much more powerful and flexible alternative. It brings all your files together and uh, adds smart tools. And the best part is that many of its core features are completely free. It's created by Riddle, the team behind some of the most popular productivity apps like Spark, PDF Expert, Calendars, and Scanner Pro. I've been using Documents for years now, and it's one of the first apps I always install when I get a new iPhone. So I'm really happy that offered to sponsor us today. What makes it so good is that it works as a, a central hub for all your cloud accounts, uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, and iCloud. Um, so you don't have to keep switching between different apps. So everything is in one place. As a photographer, I use documents daily in my workflow. I can unzip and zip project folders and move large batches of videos or photos with just a few taps. And when I'm out shooting and my phone storage fills up, documents automatically detect large video files I can delete to free up space instantly. And one of the coolest features is the Smart Eraser. It's an AI tool inside the Documents app that helps you to remove unwanted objects from your photos. It's a really quick way to edit out anything you don't want. And also, I like the built-in PDF editor, which is perfect for reviewing contracts, highlighting changes, or even signing documents right on my iPhone. I can also set files reminders so I don't forget to follow up later. It's also good for reading books or studying your PDFs with all the tools you need to highlight, annotate, and take notes right in this app. So yeah, if you haven't tried Documents yet, you should give it a try. It's a great all-in-one tool. You can download it right now from the link in the description and uh, let me know what you think. Okay, so the next one is Sofa, which is great if you struggle with decision paralysis during your free time. So if you tend to spend way too much time trying to decide what to watch or what to do when you have free time, this is the one to get. So the idea is whenever I come across something interesting, you know, a movie, book, or a video game that I want to play, I can add it to Sofa. Um, I really like this tool because it pulls in metadata automatically. So instead of just text notes, I get cover art, descriptions, ratings, and, and even availability information showing which streaming services has it. And also what's great is that when you have this list, you don't waste time deciding what to watch. You can just simply open Sofa and choose something from your pre-made list. Honestly, this small change has made my downtime feel more, more intentional and uh, satisfying. All right, if you're someone who reads a lot and wants to keep track of interesting quotes, passages, or ideas, Sublime is awesome. Think of it as your personal collection of inspiration. What makes Sublime special, in my opinion, is its discovery feature. For every quote or passage you save, Sublime shows you related ideas, not just from your own collection, but from the, the entire community. I love how this lets me discover more interesting books, authors, and articles. It's just a really nice app to open when I want to sort of relax or calm down. It feels really nice and it helps you get inspiration and some motivation as well. Um, I actually made a full review of this app, so check it out if you're curious. The next one is Recall, which is the best studying app I know. It's a perfect tool if you learn new things by watching YouTube videos or reading blog posts online, um, like myself. Essentially, when I watch interesting videos or read articles, instead of hoping I'll remember them later, I simply save them to Recall. 
it doesn't just store it, it creates a summary. I can even ask specific questions about the content and recall post relevant information instantly. You can save this into your notepad as well if you want to keep it. But honestly, what I love the most about it is the quiz. Um, I always use flashcards whenever I'm studying something. So instead of just reading and forgetting soon, I can generate flashcards from any saved content. Then when I have uh, you know free time waiting for coffee or on a train, I can pull out my phone and review these cards, which is absolutely useful to move the things I just learned into my long term memory. Also, it doesn't have to be from um, online content. Say you want to remember your friend's birthday, you can just open a note and make a new flashcard for it. So it's a pretty versatile, handy memorization tool, but this is not free. So if you're looking for a free app, I recommend Notebook LM by Google. It's a great AI studying app on mobile. You can basically create notebooks for different topics and other YouTube videos, articles, and so on. Then you can have it generate a podcast style summary for you, which is very cool and uh, useful to learn things on free time. To look like a bright red scarf in an otherwise muted scene. Exactly, that kind of thing. Okay, speaking of studying, I've been learning Spanish for a while, mostly with Julie which has been okay for me, but I also find this vocabulary app very useful. Um, it's a pretty simple app where you can just swipe left or right for each word. I also love that it gives you a context as well as this AI tutor where it can explain what it means or helps you revise your mistakes. Um, I highly recommend it. Okay, the next one is Craft. Um, it has become my go-to app for organizing my work stuff. It's like the minimalist version of Notion. It's simpler and a little cheaper. By far, my most favorite feature is the whiteboard. This canvas is so useful when I plan projects or brainstorm ideas, especially for the creative work I do. So before a photo shoot or planning a YouTube video, I can easily create a new board and put everything there, like inspiration, mood board, to-do list, contact info, etc. Then I can review this anytime on the go or share it with my team or clients. But overall, Craft is just a, such a beautifully designed tool. I love its different page styles to make your documents look good. Um, I actually made a full video on how I've been using Craft instead of Notion. So uh, check it out if you're interested. Now, Raycast is the newest addition to my app stack on my iPhone. Um, it's a great utility tool. You can chat with different AI models like ChatGPT, Claude, and Gemini. Um, when you want real-time online information, Publixity is really useful. Then you can even save the results to your notes so you can see it again either on your mobile or on your desktop. What I also love to use is the snippets. Since I get lots of inquiries every day, I typically need to type the same answer over and over again. So um, I keep all the responses as snippets and then just paste them quickly. Also, when I post a video or photos on Instagram, I always put the same hashtags. So instead of typing them every time, I add them to Raycast. This way I can just type the snippet and paste it instantly. And another thing I like to do with Raycast is those various AI commands. Say you're reading an article and there's something you don't understand, you can just highlight that part and share it with Raycast AI. There's a bunch of AI commands that you can select, but in this case, pick um, something like explain it in plain terms. Then it gives you the answer right away. There are lots of use cases like this. Um, for instance, when you are writing a message, you can select it and share it to Raycast so you can proofread it or uh, change the tone. But you know, I guess you can now do this with Siri, so there's no need for that. Um, I'm really happy with the uh, mobile app, but I'm a bit disappointed that I cannot sync my clipboard history between my iPhone and my Mac. So I'd have to use a different app like Paste for that. If Raycast could do that, I would absolutely love it. Okay, now when I need to concentrate on important work, Endo has been great. It's a really famous app, so I'm sure you guys know it already. It has various soundscapes for different purposes like focus, relax, and sleep. I find it particularly helpful during writing sessions or when I'm editing photos. I typically listen to the uh, binaural beats with my earphones on and it now lets me set a focus timer and block distracting apps as well. So that's amazing. 
um, I initially thought it would be just a you know gimmick, but I feel it actually works really well. I typically get a lot more done compared to when I don't use it. Oh, and I also use this uh, meditation sessions just because I don't want to pay for other meditation apps. It's just a simple meditation timer, but works really well for me. The next one is Ampunote. It's by far the most important app for me. It's my go-to for task management. I won't go into too much detail because I talk about it all the time on my channel, but I love how it combines notes, tasks, and calendar all in one place. You can jot down ideas, make to-do lists, then build your schedule within this single tool. I use it every single day and honestly, my life would be much more chaotic without it. So if you're curious, you can check my other videos about Ampu Note where I go more in depth. Okay, journaling has always been a habit that I wanted to maintain, but traditional journaling apps never quite stuck. Um, Mebot has changed that by turning journaling into conversation with an AI friend. So instead of staring at a blank page, wondering what to write, um, it gives me prompt with questions about my day, goals or feelings. This conversational style makes journaling feel more natural and easier. Uh, also, it remembers a past conversation as well. Uh, so it kind of feels like talking to an um, actual friend. But honestly, it's not just a journaling app. It's more like an AI companion. So you can use it for other things like writing, researching, etc. Okay, you've definitely heard of the next one because it's super famous. It's Do. I don't use it every day, but I use it for absolutely critical reminders. In case you don't know, Do is different from other reminder apps that just send a single notification which you can easily miss. Instead, it's very persistent. It keeps sending you reminders until you either complete the task or reschedule it. It's very annoying for sure sometimes, but it's exactly what I need for those crucial tasks like giving medication to my pet or making important calls. Okay, the next one is Time Tree. I've actually mentioned this app in my last video, but it's worth mentioning here as well because it's an essential tool for me when it comes to coordinating schedules with my family and friends. It's a free app that makes finding the time that works for everyone much easier. What I love most about it is how it's built specifically for social coordination. Beyond just showing everyone's schedules, it lets you add comments to events, maintain shared to-do list, and even count down to important dates. For me, it's a place for managing everything from household chores to social events. Also, it's so intuitive and simple that anyone will have no trouble getting started. And since it's free, there's no barrier to getting everyone on board. Check out my recent video if you want to see exactly how I use it to keep things organized. All right, um, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye.